Welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. Today is Saturday, August the 12th, 2023, and I'm starting an experiment where I'm going to try to use RISC-V hardware for all of my computing for a whole week. In case you're not in the know, RISC-V is a free and open instruction set architecture, or ISA, that provides an alternative to the closed ISAs used in today's x86 and ARM processors. Right now, RISC-V is used in embedded computing, but it's still very much developmental when it comes to server or end user computing. And this week therefore provides an opportunity to see how advanced end user RISC-V now is in terms of both the hardware and the software. So let's go and take a closer look at the hardware I'm going to be using. Right, here we have the five RISC-V computers that I've reviewed over the past 18 months. And from these, the two I'm going to be using this week are this Star 5 Vision 5 II, which has got four 1.5 gigahertz U74 cores and four gigabytes of RAM, and this Cypied Lychee Pi 4A, which has got four 1.85 gigahertz C910 cores and eight gigabytes of RAM. The other boards here are the Vision 5.1, the Nasar, and the Mango Pi MQ Pro, and I may boot these up if required. In case you're wondering, the phone I'm going to be using this week is this one. This is a flip phone which I can use for taking calls and texting, but I'm going to be entirely dependent on RISC-V hardware for all online and other computing activities. And with this said, let's get this Lychee Pi 4A up and running as it's now Saturday afternoon and I've yet to even check my email and social media. And there we are, we now have hardware running. And if we go across to the desktop, here we are running Debian on the Lychee Pi 4A where this runs pretty well, it's pretty stable. You see if I open things up, it's uh, pretty responsive. This is, this is very usable. I showed you this on my channel when I reviewed the Lychee Pi 4A just a couple of weeks back, I think it was. And uh, you know, this, this, this runs uh, pretty well. We'll have a look at various programs here, I'm sure, across the week. But uh, right now I've been using Chromium. I've been checking up on the news and I've also been checking my email. And of course, like many things this week, I'm going to have to redact a lot of things on the screen, but hopefully you can see what is going on. Here we're running the Outlook web client with no problems at all. And I've also gone into Google Docs, which for me is absolutely critical. I live so much of my life in Google Docs, and this works pretty well. If we open up the file I have for the script and notes for this particular film, you'll see it takes a bit of a time to settle. That's really the experience with everything. You have to learn to be a little bit patient to let things come up settle down, stop loading in. As you can see it's doing here at the top, but when it's actually loaded in and settled, which I think it'll get there in a second, come on, you can do it computer. It's still having a little think and uh, hopefully it'll finish off. It's still going round, isn't it? We probably could go and try and edit things here, but it'll take a second to really, really get there. But I think it's now probably okay. There we are. If I could now, for example, just start a new paragraph and we could go, hello everybody, I am now writing in. Google Docs. As you can see, this works absolutely fine. So there we are. I am up and running with Risk 5 Week, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Greetings. It's now Sunday afternoon, and guess what? That therefore means that a new Explaining Computers video has just gone up. There it is, all about Windows 12, what it might have in it causing some interesting discussion in the comments. And it also means that I can go across to my video slate, my Bible for explaining computers, and delete that particular video because it's now gone up. There it is, it's gone. And as we can see, the next Sunday video to go up, at least for me, is the one about the Lychee Pi 4A, which we're running right now. I get very confused with all this backwards and forwards in time. Anyway, as I demonstrated in this video, right now on the Lychee Pi 4A in Debian, we have got hardware accelerated video playback in Chromium, but with unusable HDMI audio. And just to demonstrate that here, here is my channel trailer. Let's put that full screen and uh, play it. There we are, it'll take a second to catch up. 
There we are, it's going to go in a second. Welcome to the Explaining Computers YouTube channel. And I think that's enough to demonstrate that the, uh, the audio doesn't work even though the, uh, the video playback is fine. And uh, I do want to fix this because I do like in the evenings to actually watch YouTube on a video. Let's just close it down for a second. That's uh, actually, we'll close it properly. Let's give some space to the poor computer in terms of its memory and resources. There we are. And as I was saying, I do like to watch YouTube and other streaming media on my television, normally in the evenings. And normally I do this using a mini ITX PC that's plugged into the TV. I use that with a wireless keyboard. But of course, this week I won't be using the mini ITX PC, an x86 PC. I want to use RIS-5. So the first thing I did to try and get HDMI working with both audio and video was to install Firefox, which I've done over here. And this works uh, pretty well, uh, except for the fact when it works as Firefox, it's not terribly good for video playback, as you can see, although we do have OK audio. Let's just bring down the, my sound, show you the audio. Welcome to the Explaining Computers YouTube channel. As you can see, the audio is working fine here, but the video playback is not ideal. Let's just bring up stats for nerds, and uh, we're having a lot of drop frames here. So this is this is not uh, this is not ideal for watching. So fortunately, as I showed you yesterday, I do have a plan B, another option, and that is to move to other hardware. So let's do that, and here we are now running Division Five Two. When I first tested out this board in January 2023, the software was at a very early stage. But now, over on my desktop, we're running an updated version of RISC-V Debian from June 2023. Technically, this is engineering release 0.8. We still don't have an official release of Debian from Star 5 for this board, but it's certainly working much better. And it's also very well documented on this page. We've really got fantastic documentation for this board. They're trying greatly to support the uh, early users of, of RISC-V. It doesn't just cover things like what's working, what isn't, that type of stuff. It even covers things like how to set the dip switches for the boot order on this board, that type of thing. They're really trying to help out the user. However, it is worth noting that the supplied Debian image for the Vision 5.2 is extremely minimal, with very few packages pre-installed, as we can see here. But I was able to run a script for Star 5 Supply, which installs LibreOffice, VLC Media Player, Chromium, Firefox, and a few other things, as we can see. Sadly, the script doesn't install a file manager, but I managed to install Thunar. So if we come back to real time, as we are here, we go down to a software again, you can see that the, uh, the Vision 5.2 is now well stocked in the application department. And most significantly, perhaps, we just go back to the uh, browser there. We go across to this tab. I've got my channel trailer here. Let's bring this up full screen. And you'll see we have no problems here with either video playback at 720p or audio. We have to play first, Chris. We do indeed. Let's do that. Let's bring up uh, stats for nerds like, uh, oh, go on, get there, like that. You have to have a little bit of patience with these boards. But as you can see, when things start to play, we aren't dropping frames. I'll just stop speaking a second so you can hear the audio. Ranging from storage devices to building and upgrading your own PC. Yes, that's fine, as you can see. We've got working audio and video over HDMI. So it does seem that this evening I'll be able to watch YouTube on my television using RISC-V. Greetings. It's now Monday afternoon, and here we are back on the Lychee Pi 4A, where I've been doing various uh, admin type stuff today. I have been using the Office packages here, LibreOffice uh, Writer, and even the uh, spreadsheet I've been using today to do a bit of accounts work. And I've been uh, answering email, that, that type of stuff. And this is all working uh, perfectly well. And I can also report that last night, I did connect the Vision 5.2 to my television and successfully watched about two hours of 720p YouTube video. Talking of YouTube video and the production thereof, you might have noticed on the Vision 5.2 yesterday that I had installed Caden Live. But unfortunately, it doesn't work on the Vision 5.2. And I've also installed it here on the Lychee Pi 4A. It's sitting here down in uh, 
multimedia, there's Caden Live, and I've also installed Blender, and they don't work on this machine either. And I'll show you that in my terminal so you can actually see the error messages that come up. Let's try to run uh, Caden Live like that. And uh, as you can see, it doesn't work. Got graphics issues. Same things with Blender. These were long shots. I do remember a few years ago, I did a Raspberry Pi 4 week where I did all my computing for a week on a Raspberry Pi 4. And I did manage to edit the video on the Raspberry Pi 4 using Caden Live and Blender for some compositing. But sadly, that is not gonna happen in this week using RISC 5. It was a long shot and, um, you know, RISC 5 is still highly developmental. The software really isn't there yet. Someone's gotta do work to make all these packages work on a new ISA and that just hasn't happened yet. This said, I am backing up and logging my video files. And as usual, I'm recording video using my HDMI recorders, specifically a Blackmagic Design Video Assist 4K, and also this uh, old Atomos Ninja. And if we look across to the Lychee Pi 4A, you'll see I've got plugged into it a caddy with one of the SSDs I use on the Atomos Ninja drive. So I record ProRes files directly to this drive. And I've also got plugged in another external SanDisk SSD. And if we go back to the desktop, we can see the drives over here. There's the uh, drive from the Ninja. This contains all the ProRes video files. And here's my Extreme SSD, which I'm using as a backup drive this week. I've got a RISC-5 folder in that. There it is. So if we go, for example, to Saturday, you can see what I've been doing is working out which files are going to be the final takes on the HDMI recorders, and then copying them across to relevant folders here, renaming the files. So I've got some idea what's going to be going on when I get around to doing the final edit. And I could play these files until I installed Caden Live. If I now try to play one of these files, I can go to a Play It With VLC Media Player, and this worked perfectly until I did the Caden Live install. It now doesn't work, which is a bit of a shame. I must try and mend that. But it is possible to open these files with Audacity, which I have installed. So if I open it with, uh, there we are, Audacity, the audio editor, this will take a second, so we'll let it load in. There we go, and Audacity has loaded in just the audio component of that file. And that means I can work on audio, because from here I can go to File and Export as a WAV file, as a WAV file. I won't do that now. I have done this previously, because in fact, if I go down here and go to a recent files, I've got, there we are. That's, this is gonna be exactly the same audio, but after I've been working on it here in Audacity. So there we are, the file is, is sitting there. So this week, it is possible for me to do some audio editing on audio files extracted from my video files here in Audacity. Greetings, it's now Tuesday, and today, aside from office and email kind of stuff, I've been experimenting with applications. For a start, I've been trying to repair VLC Media Player. I've not entirely succeeded. If I type VLC here, I still get the error, as you can see, but I can now play video files without the interface. So if I bring up this command, this should play the uh, Explaining Computers channel trailer. And it does, as you can see. I can't make this full screen here because I haven't got any interface control to do it with, but at least I've got the ability to play video files now on the system. And I've also been reading the Alighty Pi 4A wiki page on building applications, which details some software that should work here in RISC-V. Specifically, I've gone to a Super Tux cart and followed the instructions here for downloading and compiling the source code for this open source 3D game. And this took a little bit of time. It made the poor computer's fan spin very fast as it heated up whilst doing all the compiling. But it now means that if we close this down to a free a few resources like that, and we bring up the uh, appropriate folder, we can now run on this system Super Tuxcart. And I'll just speed through to the start of a game. And here we are gaming in RISC-V, it's very exciting indeed. I think I'm behind already. Oh dear, but it works. And we're going, to, oh, it's exciting, isn't it? Whoa, I don't think I'm supposed to be over there. Never mind. but uh, I'm trying to do too many things at once. That's my, uh, that's my excuse. But oh dear, ah, oh, oh, we've been caught by a bird. That was nice, wasn't it? 
And uh, we can't make this full screen in terms of the controls, but we can uh, do it like this, like that. And this will struggle a bit more now, but it will still work. This is not going too bad. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not quite in control of this, am I? But uh, anyway, the point is I'm trying out something graphical. This is Risk V, and it's working. I think this has been a great success, so I'm going to continue to try and uh, not make a complete mess of playing this game, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Right, it's now Wednesday evening, and today I've spent quite a lot of time in the Microsoft Cloud working on a forthcoming lecture in the PowerPoint online web application, which is perfectly usable here on the Lychee Pi 4a. However, what I want to talk about today are security-related issues on a RISC-V system. Firstly, I'm used to working with secure portable drives, often encrypted using VeraCrypt. And whilst this is available for Windows, for Mac and for Linux, including an ARM version to use on a Raspberry Pi, there sadly isn't currently a version of VeraCrypt for RISC-V. And so, before this week started, I had to make sure that all of the encrypted files I needed to work on were stored on hardware encrypted drives, like this DataShore model, which can be accessed with no problems using RISC-V hardware and software. And indeed, if we just go back to the desktop, there we are, there's the DataShore drive, accessible, no problems at all. More fundamentally, I've sadly not been able to use hardware authentication keys like this YubiKey. And for me, this has been a major issue as all of my online accounts rely on hardware keys for their two-factor authentication. In particular, my Google accounts are in Google's Advanced Protection Program, where it's impossible to log in without a hardware key. You simply can't use a phone code or other less secure method. But as we can see, if I try to use the Yubico test site to authenticate a YubiKey, if I just press next here, it'll ask me to uh, tap the side of the key, I will do that, and uh, it won't work. And this will go on forever, or at least until it times out. So here in RISC-5 Debian, this simply doesn't work. Now, in Linux, it's fair to say, you do often have to manually set things up, and there's various instructions for that over here, and I've gone through all of these instructions, all the things you're supposed to do, and indeed if I show you that, I've done all the uh, important things, I set the right rules and things up, and indeed I use YubiKeys on Linux systems all the time. But this week, I've not been able to do that, and so before I started this experiment, I had to temporarily change the security settings on some accounts, and to simply decide not to access others this week, and clearly that's not ideal. Now, without doubt, this is a software support issue. There's no reason that RISC-V hardware cannot work with hardware security keys. But the fact I can't get it to work right now with any available operating system is, for some purposes at least, a major constraint on RISC-V adoption. Greetings! It's now Thursday evening, just over a day to go in my RISC 5 week, and I thought I'd say something about the hardware that's made all of this possible. And let's start with the Vision 5 II, which has mainly this week been a TV PC. I must have watched over eight hours of streaming media on this board so far, mainly catching up with my favourite YouTubers, but I've also been watching Paramount Plus, which has worked very well indeed. I don't know in what resolution I've been watching, Paramount Plus won't tell me, I think it's been 720p, but it's worked very well. And also on this board, I've installed Solitaire, so after watching streaming media, I've been able to test out playing cards on the RISC-V ISA, which has worked very well indeed. As you can see, there's no active cooling solution on the Vision 5 II. I've got this small heat sink, the documentation says you don't need one. I'm glad I've got the small heatsink though, because this board does get warm after you've been watching streaming media for some time. So if I was going to use this long term, I would fit a, a more powerful cooling solution. And uh, moving across to the Lychee Pi 4a, it clearly needs active cooling. It would get, I think, very hot without that. This fan has driven me mad initially. 
Saturday and Sunday I kept thinking I'm going to have to replace this fan. It is so noisy as it winds up and down. It is speed controlled, but uh, I've got used to it now. But again, long term I would change the cooling solution on this board. And there's no doubt at all the Lychee Pi 4A is a more responsive computer. You know, you don't have to wait so much. The, the, the browsing experience in particular is really good, apart from the HDMI audio problems in, in Chromium. And it's never crashed. This has been a very, very stable board this week. I've been amazed at the stability of the, the Lychee Pi 4A. And the final thing I want to do comparing these boards is to get both of them to apply a filter in GIMP, a test I've often used in my videos. And as both of these boards will run GIMP, it seems a good thing to do. So let's start with the Vision 5.2 where I've got GIMP running, as you can see, and we'll do a new document, which will be 1920 by 1080 the default, which is what I always use in this test. And we'll go to a filters and a render and a lava like that. And just before I push the button, I'd note a couple of things. Firstly, often when I run this test, people say, it's not multi-threaded, it's a terrible test. So earlier I ran the test and then brought up HTOP, where we can clearly see this is using all CPU cores. Whether it's using them all very efficiently, we can debate, but it's certainly not single threaded. Second thing I'd note is that when you run this test on a Raspberry Pi 4, it takes about 47 seconds. And the final thing I'd note is that normally when I do this in a video, I do clever graphics showing two computers side by side. I can't do things like that very easily right now because I'm doing this risk five week thing where I can't go back and forth into a video editor. So I'm going to time this with a stopwatch, but you will see proper timing clocks in the final edit. So let's start out the Vision 5.2 and we'll speed on through towards the end. And I make that about 67 seconds. So let's go across to the Lychee Pi 4A where GIMP is just coming up. Here we are. And again, we'll do a new document, exactly the same 1920, 1080. And again, we'll go to filters and to a render and to a lava. And I want it to come up. There we are. We'll press the button on the default settings. And there we are. I make that about 33 seconds. So significantly faster, about twice as fast as the Vision 5.2, but far more significantly, it's significantly faster than a Raspberry Pi 4. And so I think this is a very interesting test. It's proving the power of this RISC-V hardware. Guess what? It's now Friday evening, and there's about five hours left in my RISC V week. The Elichi Pi 4A is working down here. Its little fan is spinning around. And if we go across to its desktop like this, guess what I've installed on this board? You'll never guess. Oh, look, I've installed Solitaire here as well. I can now play Solitaire on two different RISC V pieces of hardware. That's exciting, isn't it? I mustn't get too involved with this. I must come back to you like that. Hello, and uh, reflect on the total experience. And it's been a very interesting week. I think I've proved without real debate, actually, that it is now possible to spend seven days doing a wide range of different computing activities, all of my computing activities this week, on RISC-V hardware. And admittedly, that hasn't included video editing. It hasn't included 1080p video playback, but it's certainly included lots of 720p. It hasn't included using hardware security keys, but these are all things that will be fixed in time. And we need to remember that right now, the hardware I've been using, the Vision 5.2, the Lychee Pi 4A, these are development boards. These are not consumer products yet. None of the software has reached official release yet, but it has come on in extraordinary leaps and bounds from where we were when I first started testing out RISC-V hardware and software only about 18 months ago. And so if we sort of think forward another 18 months, I think we'll be at the point where we start to see consumer RISC-V hardware. Thin clients, media players, maybe, maybe tablets, maybe um, smart TVs based on, on RISC-V hardware and software, perfectly possible. And I find this really exciting. We are going to be in a world which has got an alternative ISA to x86 and ARM for desktop end user computing and probably server computing as well come to that. 
And I do look forward to uh, being able to repeat this experiment, maybe in a year's time, whatever it is, when I can edit the video as well on a, a RIS-5 computer. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,